<laughs> yeah, that's better. <laughs> I'm sort of like half peaceful, half borderline freaking out. <laughs> <laughs> What's he got to be nervous about? One, two, three, four. This is Unplanned America, where you're invited to join Parv, Nick and me, Gonzo, as we flee Australia to road trip around the land of the free in search of the weird, wonderful, mysterious and sometimes scary unplanned side of America. This week we travel to Las Vegas, Seattle, Portland and New York City to spend time with four entrepreneurs who use sex as capital to chase their American dream. Later on we get a lesson in latex from a veteran of the kink scene, but first up we enter the brave new world of cam girls. Guys want the girl next door experience, an accessible woman, and they want they the kind of person they think they could just meet out in the street. That sort of uh, illusion. It's all about playing a role. The next uh, few hours are going to be pretty interesting. We're in Seattle, Washington. We're going to hang out with a girl named Ayla. Just let me change lanes for a minute here. The road's chaotic. Um, she's a cam girl, so basically she strips for money and does things on camera for people around the world that fap off in their bedrooms too, so... Right lane, right, right lane. Right, 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 right. Right, right. Sweet driving. <laughs> Fuck, man, you shouldn't be hosting and driving at the same time. What am I doing if I fucked it? No. We're good. <laughs> I'm very introverted. Yeah. I'm a hermit. I don't really move. Lately, I've mostly been walking to the bathroom and to the kitchen. <laughs> then I come back, <laughs> rinse and repeat. That's my life. But I like it like that. Whoa. There it is. That's beautiful. That went from, like, farts to, like, a purr. 23-year-old Ayla lives with two other cam girls who she first met online before they all decided to live together in Seattle. She's been performing to thousands of eager home viewers in her highly unique style for three years, and her psychedelic sex shows are a far cry from her conservative Christian upbringing. Rolling. Is that all right? Twice it. Second Why? Clap. The second, the first clap wasn't... <laughs> two claps. <laughs> for people who've never seen a uh, cam show, I don't know what it is, how would you describe it to them? Um, kind of like internet stripping. You know, you go on online and then you have a whole bunch of people watch you and they can chat and then uh, you just broadcast your camera and then you can do random things in front of it in exchange for tips. Can you just take us through the first time you ever did it? So that what that first show was like? Well, the first time was terrifying because uh, my entire life I've been like very homeschooled and I was raised very religious. And so I had no experience whatsoever <laughs> showing my body to anybody, not even doctors. So the first time was horrifying for me. I needed money. I was like living on a friend's couch and I decided to give it a shot. And I just got really, really drunk and I was really terrified. Um, but I made $80 the first night and I came away from it like really drunk. And I was like, friends. <laughs> I'm rich now! <laughs> and uh, it was uh, great, and I never looked back. It just kept going. How much money do, can you make, do you make doing this? Um, the top cam girls can make probably around sixty to $70,000 per month. Per month, um, wow. Doing camming, right. Jeez. The average cam girl makes approximately $20 an hour. What's the minimum wage in America? It's about... seven twenty-five, I think, in some states. Yeah, right. So it's far greater than that. Yeah, massively. I mean, so even if you don't do well, you're still doing better than you would at, you know, working at Dairy Queen. Our next destination was another leafy suburb, this time in Portland, Oregon, where behind one of these manicured lawns lurked the horror-themed webcam stylings of Veronica Chaos. Thank you. OK, cool. All set. <clears throat> from the top or from... And you just do a, like, I'm here with Veronica and, yeah. yeah OK, yeah, cool. So I've been wanting to be in the adult industry in some fashion for a very long time. Um, and I've always wanted to bring art to it. So I tried stripping for a while, and I didn't really like that. I wasn't very good at it. I'm not a very good dancer. I'm not very graceful. I look like a weird, like, 
a, I, I don't know what I look like on the, on the pole, but it's not good. So I wasn't really making any money off that. I was getting pretty desperate, honestly. Pretty much, I, I needed money. I don't want to be homeless. Then I can take my clothes off and I have a computer. I notice actually there's, there's sort of like horror movie posters everywhere. You seem to be quite a horror movie buff. I tend to find horror movies very erotic. So for me, it makes perfect sense to do horror themed sex shows because I think horror movies are sexy. I mean, fear and sex are very similar. That's the adrenaline pumping. And also sex is quite terrifying. I mean, you're, you're, you're exposing yourself to another human being who isn't afraid of that as, in some level. Veronica often performs with her partner, Slappy the Dummy, who seems to be a willing participant in all sorts of kinky funhouse depravity. Physically, the furthest I'll go is, um, oh, one time um, I had um, him dress up as, um, as um, Slappy Holmes, and I dressed up as V.C. Watson, and then he fucked me in the ass. Hey, Gonzo. How are you going? Yeah, not too bad, mate. Just uh, hanging out here at Veronica's hey, place. Quite good footage, actually. Yeah, it's great, it. isn't it? Okay, Interesting. Um, Only in Portland for. So do you? What about? Uh, I think we're here probably for about a week. Our third surprising destination was in a lavish gated community in Las Vegas. Sophia Locke, a five-year veteran of camming, is the most business-minded of the three women and makes a killing with her kinky shows. Let's do it, we can do it. It's gonna be the best interview. Oh my god, this is the fucking done. best interview I've ever fucking done. This is so amazing right now. I've always been very sexually adventurous. Um, I was swinging and doing stuff with girls since I was in high school. So um, I had a high sex drive. I was in a job that I didn't necessarily love. I, I couldn't see myself going anywhere really with it. And I found this. And um, I put a lot of thought into it. I knew my family wouldn't be very happy with it. Um, but it just seemed like a really good fit. And I tried it and loved it. So that's what we've been doing for the past almost five years. Yeah, it's fun. It's a community more so even, uh, well, not just sex stuff. It's sometimes they have me dress up as Godzilla and destroy Jenga towns. <laughs> like, or, you know, butt fuck a Justin Bieber cut out. I mean, it's really the weirdest, coolest job I've ever had, honestly. <laughs> Wow. So. The majority of girls that I've met who do this for a living are very introverted. And that was surprising to me because I'm an extrovert. I've always been kind of loud and I think the camera and the computer and that they're just words on a screen. I think a lot of girls see it that way. Yeah. Um, so they don't see it necessarily as people as much. They see it as words on a screen so it's less intimidating and they're inside their homes. You've got social anxiety in, in one way, but this I, I would have thought would make you more socially anxious, but is that not the case? Well, I mean, it's not really me on there. It's a persona. I'm not usually smiling 24-7 going, thank you. Veronica is super duper, you know, she's much more outgoing than me. Yeah, I'm a highly introverted person. Um, I really hate being around physical people for very long stretches at a time. You get to work from your home and you don't have to see people physically. I'm like really into fantasy books. I've read so many fantasy books throughout my life. Too many hours and years. I try to draw a personification of like uh, the inside of me. I feel like a dude quite a bit of the time. Is that you as well? Uh-huh. I like the idea of uh, representing like various aspects of personality in symbolic ways. This is one of my favorites. That's awesome. The robot looking in the mirror. I really like the concept behind it, like, you know, the discovery of consciousness. I have this overarching feeling all the time that I'm like, like 85 years old and I'm dying and I'm on, on my deathbed. And like, as I'm dying, I'm having this flashback of my life, right? And I'm living it as I want it. And so I feel like I am that flashback. I'm just the memory of a dying person. And so I try and do everything that I wish that I would have in my life you know, from that perspective. <laughs> Holy crap. Yeah. So, like, you're getting zapped. Oh. <laughs> yeah. This is, this uh -oh. is my favorite one. Um, you can put it in different places on your body as long as it has, like, skin contact. I usually put it in my groin, so I hope that doesn't bother you. How intense is this one? Um, I'll show you. Oh. oh, what? 
Oh, are you kidding? Superpowers. Oh, cool. X-Men. Oh. <laughs> can we go through, can you go through me to someone else? Yes. You can do that. Yes. Can hold my hand, we can. So I hold your hand, and then and then you're I'm grounded to you. Hold him. Oh. Hold him. Hold. Hold Paul. I might hold have to pal. turn it up a little bit. Oh yeah. What oh. the hell? <laughs> <laughs> We had been exploring the world of cam girls, spending time with Ayla, Sophia and Veronica and gaining some insights into this life we knew little about. Yeah, that'll be good. Then it was showtime. Each tip the girls earned signalled by a chime. I think we might be ready. Hello? Hello, guys? Hold on. It was lovely to see you. Hi, Arcane. Hi, Avalon. Hi, Space Boy. My mom sent me a beautiful handwritten note and this hat. And she was like, sweetie, I was thinking about you. I know you like the color red and I know you like French shit. She didn't say that word because she's religious. <laughs> Today, I tried to get naked for you asshole. Um, the other night I did a, a cum show where I was showing everything and there was about 2200. I've been in a room where there's been 5,000. I like to imagine, I like to imagine like a theater, yeah. It's really hot for me. I like, I like to see the number. I have like four dudes watching me right now. So you know I'm in heaven. Australian dudes nonetheless, I know. They're just gonna talk about you the whole time. Oh, thank you, Lauren. Traditionally, adult entertainment is dudes watching porn by sure. themselves, but you're doing a new form, which is a, a sort of more intimate relationship sure. between you and, you know, your guests, your customers. Does anyone get obsessed with you? I, I think everyone's kind of come across what, what I like to call a skin suit regular, like they'd wear your skin as a suit. So, <laughs> but the majority, oh the majority of people are normal people, yeah. you know, they're just normal guys and girls. I sit here and I worry for a while, and then I think, oh God, they're all gonna laugh at me, they're all gonna laugh at me, and then I eventually go, I can't pay rent if I don't click that button. So then I press the button. Hello? Can you guys hear me? Hi, FNMES. Are you showing off your back and your dirty pillows? No, Mom, I know, I would never, I would never do that. The people that tend to be bad at distinguishing from fantasy and reality that are the ones that get like, you know, unhealthily attached. You know, and I can understand, like there's totally been times where I've found somebody's YouTube channel and have totally fallen in love with them because I really like their videos and their content's amazing and they're really creative and they're putting on these great shows and oh, right, yeah, that's not really them. That's just, that's just their YouTube videos. So I can, I can, I mean, I understand everybody has, I think everybody has like a celebrity crushes and stuff. You can work whenever you want. You can sign on literally anytime and there's no like, oh gosh, okay, I have rent due in a week and my boss cut my hours, so now I'm not gonna, like, I don't have to worry about a boss cutting my hours. I make my own hours. Every day I go to work where every, all of people do is just tell me how beautiful I am and then they pay me money for being beautiful. It's like, wow, like, jeez. I go to work every day and basically get attacked by the people in the car. <laughs> and this is, a, this is true. There's a bit of a perception sometimes that porn is degrading to women. What are your, what's your thought on that? People sometimes refer to camming as like, how could you do this? You know, this is so, you know, degrading of you. I'm like, well, what, before this, I was working like 45 to 50 hours a week in a factory under fluorescent lights with people telling me what to do, like with, at, down to the minute of every day to sell my life away for a measly sum. That I would think that's more degrading more and inhumanizing. Yeah. Exactly. 
I've, I've done a lot of customer service jobs and you have a boss and if someone says something rude to you, you have to kind of suck it up and say, I'm so sorry, sir. You know, how can I assist you? And maybe I can do this for you. Not with this. You can <laughs> say, screw you. <laughs> <laughs> I've noticed that I've become more assertive, more confident, especially with men. Um, if I feel like someone, you know, in a club in Las Vegas is being rude or, or being um, creepy, maybe before I would have been like, oh, please don't. And now I say, that's not okay. Horny old fart. Look, a girl's talking to you. You have been on the site since 2007. You've never even paid the $20 to upgrade and talk to anybody. So you can, um, oh, go fuck yourself. Bands. Yes. That was fun. I think there's a stigma with women in the sex industry or who adult who do adult work that there's maybe sexual trauma or emotional trauma. And I had the most like cookie cutter middle class upbringing where both of my parents were very educated. I had a great upbringing. I had no sexual trauma or history. I think there are many intelligent women in this industry that don't have that in the background and some that do too. It's like any other job, you know that people are gonna have stuff in their, in their past, but there isn't, I don't think, a link, especially with webcamming, that I've seen where everyone is traumatized and that's why they turn to sex work. Mm -hmm. So certainly not me, so I'm, I'm a good example of that. <laughs> be reason enough to quench your ever-raging heart on. May, you must have your pants tailored specifically now on to accommodate your giant rod of steel. I was raised a fundamental Calvinist Christian and I was homeschooled my whole life. So I, I had a very uh, drastic sort of upbringing. But luckily, my mom is a very forgiving <laughs> and loving. And so she definitely disapproves of what I do, but she, she still talks to me, which is nice. Some girls don't have that. I'm unfortunately uh, still basically estranged from my mom and my sisters, but my dad and stepmom have been really supportive and wonderful. Um, but yeah, I'm not welcome home at Christmas and things like that with my mom's side. So it's been really wow. tough, but I, I, I'm the happiest I've ever been otherwise and focused and, and I feel like this is where I'm meant to be in, in this industry. And so I'm just trying to tough it out and hope that someday she'll come around, you know. It so. seems like a high price to pay to it is. follow something you personally believe in so much. It is, but I um, hopefully she can see that, I, that I'm truly happy and um, it just stinks when someone puts conditions on their love for you. I think that's, that's really tough, but I've personally received, you know, hundreds of emails and tweets and, and uh, things like that where people say that, that maybe I've helped them over, overcome some uh, confidence issues or that it's nice that they can come home and just have somebody to talk to, uh, stuff like that. So I don't know. I'm proud of what I do, and I, I think there's nothing wrong with it. So hopefully, hopefully it'll come around. That'd be nice. There's such a huge social stigma, and you don't, sometimes you don't even realize it until you get outside of your bubble. I was so proud and, and happy with what I did, and. And, and loved it and people treated me respectfully and I knew other girls who did it and then you step outside of that and it's you're hit with this huge shock of people still don't accept this. They still think, you know, you're stealing husbands and boyfriends and you're disgusting or you don't respect yourself. Um, and I, I, I can't tell you how many beautiful, intelligent women that I've met doing this. So uh, trying to fight that stigma and trying to show that you can be a, a businesswoman and, and still embrace your sexuality and be sex positive, you can still do that in this industry. Maybe little by little we can kind of chip away at that and change the stigma, hopefully. In a world where sex will always be sold, it was nice to see that these women were in complete control of the sexuality they were selling, a fact that is sadly often not the case. Ayla, Veronica and Sophia had chosen a unique path to escape from the rat race in a way that suited their needs and which also seemed like a whole lot of fun. For the viewers on the other side of the camera, it appeared to provide a fun community for them to be a part of, and sometimes even an emotional connection that may be lacking in their lives. Not to mention some damn sexy entertainment. This prick's reading is fucking paperwork. <laughs> What's he doing? You are kidding me! 
you see it? Dude! That is unsafe! Is there a law against that? There's a law against phones, but that's fucking next level. We're on our way to see the Baroness in New York City. She runs a, a fetish label. She makes latex clothing. I'm the Baroness. I've been doing latex for 20 years now. I'm the reason why there's color in the latex world. Um, I really brought latex to America, so that's kind of my thing. A veteran of the fashion industry and New York's legendary art scene, the Baroness found her true calling when she fell in love with latex 20 years ago. And since then, she has dressed Lady Gaga, Madonna, and many more of the celebrity elite. Latex has an all over stretch, so that means there's no limits as far as what you can do to make something really tight or not. It has a wonderful sound, which I'm sure you can hear very well. It has a wonderful sight, visually. It's When it's shined up, you kind of get lost in the shine. When it's not shined up, you kind of get lost in the depth of it. It has a great feeling on the body, which I'll demonstrate to all of you later. Um, it has a smell like vanilla milk chocolate. I don't know if you've noticed that when you came in. And it has a taste like a balloon. That's my least favorite of all of those things. So which one of you is the most adventuresome? Maybe me. Maybe. I'm a bit <coughs> fragile today. I, haven't, I couldn't sleep last night, so I'm operating on So maybe sleep. you'd like the comfort of a nice inflatable straight jacket. Yeah, and you blow up and hold you in place. Yeah. I do need like a bit of a cuddle, so that might be like. That'd be a kind great. Of a, love it. Yeah. Right. Sit. Now feel by your feet. There's a little. You might have to help me with this, Persephone. Behind your feet. And this is so much fun. Yes. Very carefully. Okay. Now you'll stand up. What appeals to me about it is having them helpless but in an attractive way that's kind of confusing to them. Isn't that really cool looking? Yeah, this one is definitely, this hood makes me feel uncomfortable. Here, sit down. I'm going to be right behind you. The chair's right behind you. Sit. Be comfy. Still yeah. nervous? <clears throat> yeah, I can't handle this hood. I don't like this hood. The other hood oh, actually made me feel all right. Hood. Can you get the other hood? He is our guest after all. That one, like, makes me really, like, want to freak. Just throw it on this one. <laughs> yeah, that's better. <laughs> I'm sort of, like, half peaceful, half borderline freaking out. Well, you just stay there until you decide which half you want to be on. <laughs> <laughs> What's he got to be nervous about? I'm, I'm, I'm short of breath already. So. With the inflatables, it's lovely because I'm changing the shape of people, and you have a sense of being, or they have a sense of being contained within it, but also you have, you lose the sense of your own proportion. So you're used to being this big when you're walking through a wall or through a doorway, and you're this big. It's a very different feeling. It's very disorienting. You look awesome. You look crazy. <laughs> it's the best outfit you've ever seen. It's quite comfortable. <laughs> of course it's comfortable, you see? Everyone thinks it's comfy. <laughs> now, this... I feel like rude laughing. No, are you? Uh, no, I don't He's your so. chum. He would laugh at you. <laughs> now, I like stuff like that. I, mean, I like the whole concept of it just being... I love the shape that he's in. This kind of exaggerated masculine shape. I feel like sort of... I don't know, a bit, well, I'm a bit sweaty or something. Well, your body's producing moisture the whole time. This is, I, I can feel like I can never lie down. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's not gonna pop, is it? <laughs> is that truly what you wanted, is to lay down? How does it feel lying down? Probably better standing up, actually. <laughs> This is probably uh, maybe not an acquired taste or something. This is sort of in the spectrum of weird shit that goes on in the fetish world. This would probably be less common weird shit. Not only does it require you having a fetish or an interest in it, it requires you having somebody else who has a fetish or interest in it, and then also you having the equipment or them having the equipment. So it's not a, a common thing, but it's so much fun. A lot of this is like nodding out on heroin. When you see people and they're just 
completely comfortable in like the most uncomfortable places. You know, like they're standing up and they're practically falling over. Yeah. But where they are is so intensely there that I mean that's just that's a treat to be able to go to a place like that where you're really just so this is all there is. It's just me. It's nice, as I said, it's weird. You know, people are like, oh, this is weird. I mean, touch this, this is weird. Yeah. And also the sounds it makes. You can touch them with the top of your head. I believe in the power of clothing, so this is really the strongest medium that I've come across for that. I'll get people who come in the store and like, oh, I could never wear that, I could never wear that, and they come out and go, I can take over the world. You know, they're just, they're completely transformed by it. The Baroness's artistry was matched only by her belief in the transcendent power of wearable latex, and she certainly got a kick out of taking us to a disconcertingly erotic new place. And now, decked out in our colourful new streetwear, it was time to burn rubber. Why, <laughs> 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 